Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now some of you probably know that I love to collect and review older and sometimes very rare graphics cards. Apparently the team at ASUS know this too and I'm extremely grateful that they got in touch to offer me a pair of what were very revolutionary GPUs. These are a couple of Republic of Gamers 9800 GT matrixes. And while they're not among the hardest to find relics, this particular card did make Tech Power Up's rare and unreleased GPUs list. So what makes the 9800 GT Matrix edition special? Well let's take a nostalgic trip down memory lane, first stopping off at Unboxing Avenue. Both of these cards were sent in their original packaging which is always a bonus, but for the purpose of this video I'll just be unboxing one on camera as they are identical. Both will be used for testing a little later though. Now what's interesting is that ASUS also released a 9600 GT variant of this card. While some of you will be quick to point out that the reference 9600 GT released before the 9800, the official ROG website states that both cards featuring this specific cooler were launched simultaneously 10 years ago. Back then, ASUS's Republic of Gamers division were mainly known for their fantastic work in the motherboard department, offering high-end products designed to appeal to enthusiasts and keen overclockers. It was in late 2008 though when graphics cards got the ROG or ROG or Republic of Gamers treatment, starting of course with this. Compared to modern cards, the first thing that really surprised me was just how light this thing is. I almost threw it through the ceiling, taking it out of the box as I assumed I'd need a lot of upward force to lift it, like more modern and heavy cards. Taking a closer look at this, and the cooler is certainly the main talking point. The looks divided a lot of reviewers at the time, though these concerns were seemingly outweighed when testing functionality. The custom cooler was designed to push warm air out the front and was a perfect accompaniment to the proactive cooling algorithm that would mean the fan reacted speed wise to the GPU load. In other words, the fan would get faster before the change in temperature actually occurred. ASUS even had a utility named eye tracker that let you adjust the clock speeds and such to your liking, similar to what MSI Afterburner does today. It's fair to assume then that this card cost a lot of money, right? Well, not really. See, the 9800 GT was essentially just an 8800 GT in disguise, based on the same G92 architecture. As such, it was considered a budget or mid-range option with a 150 US dollar price tag. Spec-wise, the card featured a 612MHz core clock, 900MHz memory clock and 512MB of GDDR3 memory. I also like the fact it features an HDMI port, something quite rare on cards of this age. I probably don't have to mention it, but it's end of life and is limited to DirectX 10. I did plan to stop testing DirectX limited cards, but given the circumstances, it was only fair to give this once revolutionary GPU a nice send-off. So, for today's test system, I've used my Z77 motherboard which will be powering an i5-3330 clocked at 3GHz. I'm using this board because my B350 Ryzen board doesn't support SLI, but don't worry because the i5 still provides more than enough CPU power for the 9800 to run at its maximum potential. The same goes for SLI. I'm going to start off with a look at single GPU performance with a few compatible games, beginning with the newest title, Fortnite. I cheated a bit here and actually used my Ryzen 5 1600 to start with, as this was before realising I couldn't add a second GPU to this setup. Now with Fortnite, we were able to average just about 30 frames per second. Now since uh, the games added planes, the frame rate has dropped across all of the cards I've tested and it is a little more demanding, especially when you're up in the air. As you can see here, the frame rate did drop to the mid 20s in some instances, but the average was brought back up once we touched down, so to speak, and ran around the map a little bit. Now you will experience some issues when there are multiple players on screen, so it's probably not ideal to be playing Fortnite on this card, even with 720p resolution and the lowest settings, because a game like this requires pretty fast reactions if you want to win. The frame drops with this card can hinder this a little bit, so just bear that in mind if you do have an old GPU like the 9800 GT here. Now I know Fortnite has removed and then re-added 
older DirectX support before, so just bear that in mind as well, because it could always happen again. Next up it was the turn of one of the most notoriously unoptimised PC ports of all time, GTA 4. Here with 720p resolution once again and the medium settings, we saw a pretty decent average figure, though this will be hindered by some very heavy frame drops indeed, often dropping below the mid-20s on some instances. GTA 4 doesn't exactly run the best, but it is one of those excellent games that still supports DirectX 10, considering it released for PC back in 2009, I believe. We will be revisiting this one a little later on with both cards to see if they improve performance. A favourite of mine and a game that we certainly had no issues with is Fallout New Vegas. Now this runs on the same engine as Fallout 3 which released in 2008, the same year as the card, so with both of these games in the series you should have no issues in running them. Here at 1080p I'm using the medium settings with anti-aliasing off, though I'm pretty sure we could have got away with high or maybe even ultra settings and still have maintained a solid 30 FPS at least. Now similar to the likes of PUBG and Fortnite, CSGO has also decided to implement a runaround and open door simulator. I actually really enjoy this new game mode, all jokes aside, and um, it's nice to see that it runs pretty well on the 9800 GT as well. We did have to turn all of these settings down to their lowest to get the maximum desired performance here, and even so we weren't able to achieve 60, but I think it ran okay. Again, you've got the same problem as Fortnite, whereby a multiplayer game like this requires quick reactions, and the drops in frames can sometimes hinder this, so just bear that in mind if you want to play CSGO using an older generation GPU like the 9800. Now, I want to quickly talk temperatures here. Idle, this card sat at 46 degrees, which is quite respectable for something of this age, and at the time could have only been expected from, say, aftermarket coolers, which is what the 9800 GT matrix essentially had attached to it. Under load, the temperature creeped up to the high 50s or low 60s, which again is a pretty respectable result, I think, and it didn't get much higher than that. That's actually very good compared to some more modern cards. It goes without saying that an old game like Half-Life 2 will run fine, at least 100 frames per second here at 1080p with the high settings. I played through this root canal level here, which is pretty open and should give you very nice frame rates indeed. But even as we made our way into busier city levels, the game still ran fine with multiple enemies on screen. The same can be said for Left 4 Dead 2. Once again, 1080p, we use the medium settings here and averaged at least 60 frames per second most of the time during this fairground level. Now I was playing the single player campaign here, so it may vary when playing online, but I have to say that the performance overall was pretty decent and you could probably get away with turning the settings up just a little bit as well. There is always a lot of zombies on screen in this game and it's nice to see that the frame rate holds up pretty solidly. Now, before we move on to SLI, I decided to give Metro Last Light Redux a try, and to get this to run well, I had to turn it down to 720p with the low settings. Now, the settings you see here do look a little lower than 720p, and I think in the past, I've um, customised the INI file in order to get it working on an older GPU, so bear that in mind when looking at these results. I think we're running at slightly less than 720p. It certainly looks more pixely than that. Um, but when I fired it up and saw that it ran, I decided to keep these settings. So Metro Last Light Redux is certainly playable with the 9800. Next up it was the turn of SLI, so I added the second card to the system, made sure it was running fine in the NVIDIA control panel, and jumped back into GTA 4. Here the average frame rate was certainly improved, but we did still see the same issues with frame drops. In fact, they were a little bit worse, with the frame rate still dropping into single figures on some very rare occasions. When it did drop though, mid-20s was sort of the standard for these dips. It's a fairly slow-paced single-player title, so you shouldn't have much trouble if you do want to play it on an older GPU. Just bear in mind that you will experience some frame drops. Finally, can it run Crisis? Well, with two cards in SLI once again, the game ran with at least 40 frames per second on the high settings. Now, Crisis, just like GTA 4, relies a lot more on the CPU, so bear that in mind when looking at the user results. However, Crisis did run fairly well, even when the action heated up here. As you can see on screen, we've got multiple enemies running at us. Um, 
A couple of explosions do occur as well and the frame rate held up pretty solidly. As with GTA, you may see a few frame dips into the low 20s. This can be resolved in this game by turning everything down to low or very low, though bear in mind the game will look an absolute mess. Overall though, with a card like this it wasn't really about the results. We know the 9800 GT is outdated and we know it will struggle in modern games, especially considering its DirectX limitations. What this card really represents is a certain step forward in terms of graphical hardware. Aesthetically speaking, and it's easy to see how modern Republic of Gamers cards from ASUS draw modern inspiration from this old beast. The emphasis on silent cooling and better power consumption for example. Of course modern GPUs feature fans that don't spin until the cars hit certain temperatures, and compared to their older brothers and sisters they are a lot more efficient. Design wise, Republic of Gamers cards still look great in my opinion, and holding something like this in your hands knowing this is where it all began certainly feels very special indeed. I promise ASUS didn't pay me to say any of that. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and enjoyed this look back at what was a very special card of its time. I'll be very happy to add this one to my collection, I hope ASUS let me keep them. So if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.